November 1st, 2021. They found it unbearable that I didn't sleep around. It was too laughable, silly. I can't remember how it began. It always began with teasing, and then the frequency hit a climax, and it stayed there. I look back and I can't connect the dots, the missing link between nagging and freezing. It was exactly like the alcohol script, but lewd. I forgot the possibility of love. I forgot it and grew numb with having forgotten. I understood the rules of romantic relationships as they'd been explained to me. I was supposed to be slept with and thrown away. I was supposed to be disposable and find glory in it. I'm supposed to say yes to the question, what about we go on a date and get into a relationship and I leave whenever I feel like it. No commitment, just casual. Not only say yes, but desire it. Isn't that apathetic? Isn't that careless? Isn't that disrespectful? How is it not these things? No one has the answer. The important thing is that it's consensual and it's fun. And if I don't want it, it is custom that I be harangued till invisibility. I seek logic where there isn't any. It's a game of numbers, not values. I should relax. I internalized this and learned a new trick. At the time, I believed it was born of insomnia and insomnia alone. Now I think it is a mixed breed, something developed from an accumulated abstract dread of being near any people. My trick is dissociation. I dissociate. I become as lifeless as possible without being dead. I have no spontaneous emotions or thoughts. The scope of my thought is only to recognize this absence. The world looks completely flat and numb to me. I am amazed at the pencil in my hands that I can't feel, the heat of my hair against my shoulders that I can't feel, the novelty of my limbs, skin, and face. They are so fundamentally unacknowledged that I cannot even state that they feel non-existent. But this is how I became around people when they would begin to talk about relationships, or when it was on my mind, and later, even when it wasn't. All I could really do was cry. I came home from school and would cry. What's wrong? And I would say, why are you crying? I feel like I don't exist, he would say. All my days are being wasted. But you do exist, she would say. This made everything worse. It denied the only thought that I'd had for weeks, my small scrap of animateness. February 17th, 2019. When my mother was getting married, she had her flowers pressed into her hair. She traveled halfway across the world with my father from Pakistan to Canada. She had been wanting my heartbeat for seven years before my father did too. And then, when she was back in Pakistan, I appeared. My aunt saw me first, a black pulsing dot on the ultrasound. I wonder what had been happening that day in the streets, to the hospital, back from the hospital. Infestation of rickshaws, motorcycles, donkey carts zooming along dusty roads, beggars trailing behind, Wild cats and dogs weaving between. At the edges, stacks of restaurants flanked with street vendors yelling deals and items. The sky is a tangle of black kites, electric wires, trees, and hot smog. This was my heartbeat's world, raw, unsanitized, chaos. When she arrived back to the family home, there would have been so much laughter and love. October 13th, 2020. Ferrying from Grand Manan back to Fredericton, I was on the boat, watching people closely, analyzing how isolated they must be. Everyone looked carnivorous to me. If I got to know any one of them, I told, told them I loved them, they would trample me on principle. It felt too crowded. I couldn't look at them. The bathroom was safe because it was just me in the mirror. I don't like it when I crack like this. I can't tell which is the illusion and which isn't, if it's in my head that people are fundamentally uncaring or not. I don't know which is lucid and which is blurred by pain and fear. I know that I don't trust people. I know what happens to my head. I call it my entire dictionary of bonds breaking. Any word associated with love or friendship becomes contentless. It loses meaning. And so the concepts get lost. A systematic deletion of any connection I had to other human beings. I could tell myself this wasn't true, but I couldn't breach the numb wall where all the definitions of these words had gone. I was empty and cold. My language was so depleted that I wasn't even able to gauge what I was trying to regain anymore. Everything just felt funny and distant to me, and I would get fatigued so quickly it felt like pain. I began looking up fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and psychosomatic pain to bring me peace. 
I knew deep down it was none of these things, but the clinical words restored a sense of order. I found a well-defined temporary space for myself there, read it to myself like a morbid fantasy.